Hello gorgeous soul, welcome to your 2020 astrology. It's extraordinary, it's full on, it's intense, it's wild, isn't it? We, yes it is, we're all gonna need a few of them kiki licks to, to survive this year, but seriously, it has a whole host of potential. We all have drive, we all have vim and vigor to make things happen. It's very, very energetic and full on. For instance, we have Jupiter, and Pluto joining forces, I mean, that is a lot to get our head around, you know. There's optimism in transformation. Of course, at the beginning of the year, we had that Saturn and Pluto conjunction. There is a lot of intensity. How are you going to use that intensity? How can you use your drive and your, your force of will to help transform your life with love and abundance? And P.S., I'm going to do it slightly differently for the yearly. I really want you to feel the energy and to just relax into the magic of what's coming up. So I'm going to do this. This video is going to be Kathy's amazing nature waves just to fully be able to meditate and focus. And hopefully you might watch it a couple of times as the year goes on to see what's coming up for you. It really is an extraordinary year. Here's your yearly astrology. Gemini, welcome to a year of serious intensity. You are feeling more intense with a greater desire to come into your power than ever before. And that is because, of course, the talk of the town for all of our yearly astrology is the Saturn and Pluto conjunction. And you have it in the eighth house of power, powerlessness, joint resources, money, sex, obsession, all things <laughs> that are primal are going to be stoked. But there's a tremendous opportunity for you to come into your power on every level, your financial power, your sexual power, and to break through of anything that's been holding you back from the past, any issues to do with death, life, death, rebirth, sex, obsession, um, joint finances. So there's a way of clearing that, but it's going to take a really big commitment. All of us, one way or the other, have to make a commitment and we have to do it with 100% of our being. So in those areas, what do you need to commit to, to create powerful change in your life? Saturn and Pluto, don't take no prisoners. They are the most intense and strong planets. And to have it in the eighth house is one hell of a thing. So it's best to work with this energy rather than against it. And one other tip is do check your ascendant for further information on that. Um, because that's going to be deeply relevant. If you don't know your ascendant, but you do know your time and place of birth, and obviously your date of birth, then go to my website, michellenight.com, michelle with one L, where you can get your chart done for free. Also, you can have a whole yearly done for free. So you can see exactly what is going on and how that's going to hit you. Highly recommend it. This is a year like no other. We haven't had that particular astrology for 500 years. And it's a big one. It's a massive lesson. And it's about us overcoming our fear as well. So what do you fear? What are you frightened of? Are you frightened of coming into your power? What's holding you back? Start working on it right from the get-go, from today, from this moment. <laughs> it's really important that you put your focus into that. And all of those areas need to be fully examined. The eighth house is also a psychic detective digging around in our shadows to find the treasure. And I do believe you're going to unearth a lot of treasure this year. But it's up to you, you know, how much effort you're going to put in. So not only is the Saturn and Pluto conjunction going to occur on the 12th, we also have Mercury, Saturn and Pluto and Sun, Saturn and Pluto around that time, 12th and 13th. So you have the confidence, you have the ideas, you have the ability to communicate well around these areas. And also you have the confidence to go for it. You know, the sun is making you very optimistic to be able to go forward and create the space 
for you to come into your power. You might find that you also mix with very powerful people this year, charismatic and powerful people. It may even be that you meet someone who is seriously flowing with abundance and they share that with you. Now, it doesn't have to be patriarchal. I think a lot of this year and a lot of our values are going to change with that Saturn and Pluto conjunction. And we're going to find out what is of true value to us. And you sure are going to find out this year. Now, Mercury retro shadow begins around the 2nd of February. So you might not be clear around then what's going on. Because obviously Mercury is your ruler from the 2nd of February. Start to double check everything. And then Mercury goes into Pisces and your 10th house of Korea. There may be some very good news or if really interesting conversations about your career at, well, actually all through February. And it may even be that there's a someone that you were connected to in the past or an idea you had in the past, which is about your career and your passion for what you want to achieve, comes back into being. I mean, it won't be completely um, clear until late March. Mercury does go direct on the 10th of March, but really, you know, the retro shadow is a little bugger as well. So, you know, think about the past. What have you let go of? Is there something that you need to push life back into? Is there something that you wanted to achieve and you didn't follow through? Get on with it. You have the tenacity of spirit to do it. Now, Saturn is briefly changing signs and going into Aquarius and your ninth house on the 22nd. And you're also going to be committing to exploring and learning and opening up to other experiences. And that energy is going to, going to come in later on. But right now, uh, in March, keep your energy open. Commit to doing things differently and to continue to learn. And it should bring you great rewards. On the 4th of April UK time, we have Venus entering your sign. There is fabulous love magic around you and the ability to be a magnet to attract things to you. So use that energy, wield it like a magic wand. Know that love is all around you, as the song goes, and know that you can draw to you experiences, people, and also abundance around that time. Because Venus is not just about love, it's also about um, finances actually. The Mercury is shifting signs again on the 27th and making you super psychic from the end of April. And you may pick up some or have some really strange and mysterious coincidences, but you're really in tune then. So in towards the end of April, make sure that you are open to your intuition. Don't intellectualize. Sometimes Gemini's like have really great intuition and then intellectualize it think about it so then you don't even know what's real and what's not real and big news the north node is entering your sign the north node is all, all about past karma and um there may be some interesting experiences karmic experiences bumping into people that you feel like you've known for eternity there may be some old lessons coming up for you mercury enters your sign on the 11th of may and that is a great time for you not only for you to express yourself but for you to be very, very convincing. Other people are drawn to your words. You'll, you know, take time to write, to create, to download ideas and do something with them. The sun also enters your sign on the 20th of May. And there's a new moon on the 22nd um, with the sun, the moon, Mercury, Venus, Vesta and the North Node all in your sign. That is a powerful new moon. You're letting go of a lot of crap. You're having a massive rebirth in May. Who do you want to be? What do you want to leave behind? What baggage have you been carrying that you can now let go of? If you could reinvent yourself, how would you reinvent yourself? You've got the power um, and you're able to push forward and, and let go, let go, let go and recreate yourself. Mercury joins forces with the North Node. Look out for those karmic connections on the 28th. And just after that, or on the same day, actually, Mercury shifts signs and goes into your second house, which makes you feel much more committed to what you're saying. With the Sun conjunct retrograde Venus on the third, there may be a few things to clear up from the past. If there's any issues to do with ex-lovers, that will pop up in June. But also, if you're in a relationship, you're able to go back to the beginning of, and do all those things 
uh, that you love to do with your partner. And if you're single, it may be someone you flirted with in the past comes forward. There is a pesky T-square on the 5th of June with the sun opposing the full moon, squaring Mars, blah, blah, blah. And for you, it is about your relationship to your partner and your relationship to your career. So if there's anything connected to, or even if you're single, actually, it could be because you're overworking or you're focused on your career. Whatever that T-squares, T show us what's out of balance. So if there's something out of balance, you could put it right, you can see it, but you might feel sort of pushed from pillar to post around that time. Mercury retrograde on the 18th of June may make you question what you've committed to, but it could just be fears. So don't take it seriously. With the sun joining forces with the north node on the 20th, you're feeling quite confident that you can rewrite your life story. Sometimes we look back at the past and we see it differently to other times. How you saw the past five years ago when you look back it will be very different to how you look back on the past this year and you're able to take that energy, take the past and empower yourself. And don't forget this whole year is about you empowering yourself. Uh, Mercury is opposing Jupiter um, and Saturn, who are both retrograde. There's a lot of stuff to reclaim from your past to do with actually independence, money, power and security. How do you feel about those things? You know, what do you want to change? You can do it this year. With Venus conjunct the North Node, there's also karmic stuff to work out. I mean, basically, there's a lot of karma to work out uh, this year. So that's not just this life. It may even be past lives. I don't want to go too hippie on you. But it's like, you know, all those things, those patterns that are deep rooted. Almost we feel like we're born into those patterns. You know, like some people are really lucky with money and crap at relationships. Some people are really lucky in love and crap with money. You know, usually that's karmic or it's a pattern really ingrained from our childhood. So what is it in your life that you want to shift that's a deep rooted pattern? You have the chance to clear out that karma now. Mercury goes retrograde again on the 14th of October and it's asking you to give yourself a good old checkup. Health, your patterns, your lifestyle, your working life. You need to go over it with a fine tooth comb to coin a cliche and go, right, what can I change here to empower myself? When Mercury goes direct on the 4th of November, or really probably a week later when the retro shadow is gone, you're like, yeah, baby, I'm feeling optimistic. Venus is in your house of pleasure, sensuality and soulmates, and so is Mercury. So November is a great time for love, pleasure, passion and creativity. Um, as is, yeah, all of November, because the sun then enters your seventh house of relationships. The full moon in Gemini is on the 30th of November. There's a psychic insight to be had then. Um, and then there's massive revelations about your relationships on the 14th of December when the new moon and total solar eclipse is in your relationship zone. And you've got some definitely some karmic stuff to work on to do with relationships. So think about the patterns in your relationship. Very important. Um, Jupiter shifts sides on the 19th of December and it's all about adventure the, in 2021 for you. And you should have a really loving time around the 20th of December when the Sun and Mercury join forces in your relationship zone. You want harmony and you're getting harmony. Um, yeah, so an exciting year for you. Don't forget issues to do with power, sex, obsession, life, death, shared resources are all super important and what you should be working on non-stop. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. check out your written monthly, weekly, yearly astrology, pop over to my website, michellenight.com. I'm not doing readings at the moment, but I do have a company of some of the best psychics and astrologers in the world. 
I've had the company for 20 years. I handpicked them and they are fabulous. So I'm gonna to start to show you, starting now, their little videos on here. Hi, I'm a Michelle Knight Psychic. I'm a seer and I'm also a medium. I'm actually from a very small family. The spiritual thing has always been part of me. I started seeing things when I was just three years old using a phone or being with you. It will be the same because the matter is spiritual. Sometimes I get visions or perceptions or taste or I listen to something or I get the feeling so through the spirits that might come to, to me to give you the message. I want you to find your own spiritual truthness. I want you to find what you really want and who you really are. I'm on the same path. We are all are. We have the answers that we are looking for within ourselves. And this is your time to embrace all of that that makes your universe beautiful. I know I have the tools to help you find the same thing. Thank you.